Hello everybody and welcome to part 44 of our Let's Play Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix on PC, 100% full game playthrough. In the uh, last few episodes of this Let's Play, we have satisfied Mushroom 13, we have defeated the uh, replica data of the Organization 13 members, and in the last episode, we ventured into the mysterious vortex that appeared in Disney Castle, and we were met with the uh, enigmatic Lingering Will. The Lingering Will claims to know Sora, but then immediately assumes him to be Xehanort, Curious in itself that the Lingering Will knows who Xehanort is, or at least his name. Leaves a lot of uh, questions. Again, unless you've already played through these games, in which case you already know the answers, but I'm choosing to be uh, cryptic and spoiler free in my commentary for those who haven't played all the games yet. So, all of that post-game content being completed brings us to now, where we are going to do our journal review and our 100% completion review before we um, head over to the final boss again and bring this Let's Play to a close. So... I'm going to do the same thing that I did for Kingdom Hearts 1 Final Mix and Rechain of Memories. We're going to go through the journal, we're going to do a quick review of um, everything in the game that we've done, and then that'll be it for this one. Alright, so... I'm not going to be uh, quite as overzealous with the journal as I've been in the last couple games. Um, I'm not going to go through and read this whole thing word for word like I did before. Um, some of these, like the character files and the Heartless, I will just leave them on the screen for like five seconds each. So if you want to read them, you can uh, just you know pause the screen and read the tip, uh, pause the video and read the text. Uh, the Ansem reports I will read in full. The story entries for the worlds I will read in full. And then anything like the missions, mini games, limits, uh, synthesis notes, we'll just, I'll, I'll read, I'll breeze through real quick. So, Secret Ansem Report 1. My efforts these many years have come to fruition, with the world I govern having become a paradise worthy of being called Radiant Garden. Nurtured by the pure water that is the source of life, fragrant flowers bloom in abundance, and the people face each day with hopeful smiles. But where there is light, darkness also lurks. As noted in my earlier reports, I must solve the mystery of this darkness of the heart. This paradise depends on it. I shall perform an experiment to probe the depths of a person's heart. One of my own apprentices, Xehanort, has volunteered to be a subject. The young man has served me ever since I nursed him back from death's door some years ago. He had lost all his memories at the time, but later showed remarkable intellectual curiosity and readily absorbed my teachings, gaining deeper wisdom. Any mental immaturity is surely due to his young age. <laughs> young age. <laughs> If I explore Xehanort's heart with psychological tests, I may be able to recall the past locked away within. My apprentice Evan has also shown great interest in Xehanort's memories. So, uh, Evan is vexed. But is he really the right subject? Xehanort does indeed exhibit extraordinary talents. Too extraordinary. Perhaps they are even superhuman. All right, now, somewhere in these reports, if I remember correctly, it's no longer Ansem the Wise. It's after Xehanort took over, so I'll just read the rest of my normal voice, I guess. I have made a grave mistake. My study of the darkness of the heart began with a simple psychological test and quickly snowballed. Spurred on by my youngest apprentice, Ienzo, uh, Zexian, I constructed a massive laboratory in the basement of my castle. Unbeknownst to me, my six apprentices then began collecting a large number of subjects on which to perform dangerous experiments into the darkness of the heart. 
As soon as I found out, I called my apprentices together and ordered them not only to cease their studies, but to destroy the results of their research thus far. What on earth was happening within the hearts of my six beloved apprentices? While pursuing the mystery of the darkness of the heart, could they themselves have strayed into its depths? Yet I remain the most foolish of all for having begun these experiments. We are not meant to interfere in the depths of another's heart, no matter what our reasons for doing so. And my error plunged me into despair. A visitor from another world soothed my dejected soul. A tiny king named Mickey came wielding a legendary key, the infamous Keyblade, said to bring both chaos and prosperity to the world. He was very knowledgeable on many topics, and we deepened our friendship as we conversed companion companionably. Never heard that one before. Upon his advice, I decided to review the data obtained at my basement lab. That is when I discovered the Ansem reports. Though they bore my name, the only one I had written was number zero. Apparently, he had gone on to pen numbers one through eight himself. Yes, the first subject in my foolish experiments. Okay, so there we go. So the other Ansem report from Kingdom Hearts 1 was written by Zaya Norton. Chaos affects not only this world, but many other worlds besides. In the Ansem reports my apprentice Xehanort had written under my name, I found the records of his hideous experiments, along with his hypothesis about the door that had appeared out of the darkness in my basement. All living things have hearts, and all hearts hold darkness deep within. Worlds are no exception. If a world is a being, the heart it holds must be colossal, and the darkness at its core must be monstrous indeed. Did Xehanort pass through that door in an attempt to contact that dark realm? No, not only Xehanort. It appears my other five apprentices, believing it was for the sake of research, stared deep into the darkness and were pulled into it. Evan, Lienzo, Brague, Dylan, Alias. They have ceased to be human. I too have had everything taken away from me vanished to a hollow realm of nothingness. What is Xehanort hoping to gain with my pilfered existence? Will my people cease to smile? If the light of hope has been extinguished, I shall henceforth walk with darkness as a friend. Here, in the realm of nothingness to which I have been relegated, darkness in the midst of nothing, darkness in zero, Thus, I shall be known as Diz, discarding the stolen name Ansem, and going in search of revenge. The distant days spent in that beautiful paradise are an illusion to me now. How long have I been here, banished to the realm of nothingness? It is only by relying upon my anger and hatred that I have been able to retain my sense of self here where all existence is nullified. My heart is being overcome with hatred towards my apprentices, possessed by the darkness, and with the anger I feel for stupidly allowing myself to be betrayed. Is this darkness eating away at my heart? I cannot continue to idle away my time here. What are Xehanort and the others attempting to do? I must unravel the mystery of these Ansem reports, intercept my apprentices, and defeat them. That is my mission, the only way to repay the world for my sins. Those beings who lack hearts, the heartless, must be the key. The darkness of the heart made flesh. Cursed shadows who not only lack hearts, but multiply by seizing hearts from any and all living things. Where have they come from, and where are they going? Three elements combine to create life, a heart, a soul, and a body. But what of the soul and body left behind when the heart is lost? When the soul leaves the body, its vessel, life gives way to death. But what about when the heart leaves? 
A being does not perish when its heart leaves the body. The heart alone disappears into the darkness. There is little time. If I remain in this realm much longer, I will certainly learn these answers the hard way. My heart is already a captive of the darkness. In this realm, where all existence has been disintegrated, I have just barely managed to preserve my sense of self by continuing to think and to write. It is a place where even time has lost all meaning. Eternity is as but a moment here. I must make haste. Certainly their plans are already underway. The Heartless must be the key to unraveling this mystery. The six traitors were operating a laboratory that churned out these cursed shadows. Not only did they generate pure blood heartless from living hearts, but they then used those heartless to synthesize artificial versions of the creatures as well. These synthetic heartless bore insignias and were called emblems. Pure blood or emblem, these heartless act only to fulfill their instinctive needs. They single-mindedly detect hearts and swarm around them. A human's commands would be ineffective. The Heartless would easily steal the human's heart and use it to increase their own ranks. But what if an even stronger Heartless was giving the orders? If he cast aside his own soul and body and became a Heartless, wouldn't he be able to control the otherwise intractable Heartless? Furthermore, wouldn't he be planning to make use of the creature's instincts? If the heart-seeking heartless have their sights set on a larger, more powerful heart, their ultimate goal is crystal clear. The largest heart in existence, the heart of the world. This is all conjecture, but it would seem he is utilizing the heartless in his search for a path leading to the heart of the world. Ansem's a pretty smart fella. My choice to befriend darkness here in the midst of nothingness was a sound one. The moment I stared straight ahead with a calm heart, neither rejecting darkness nor fearing it, I gained a newfound power. A superhuman power. The power of darkness. It is likely Xehanort and the others were enraptured by this power, eventually becoming its prisoners. I do not intend to allow my heart to be devoured by the darkness as they did, of course. With this new power, I uncovered a corridor of darkness that connects the realm of nothingness to the outside world. While it is still difficult to come and go as I please, my banishment is now a thing of the past. To deceive Xehanort and my apprentices, I first used my power to change form before returning to the realm of light. As I had suspected, Xehanort had become a Heartless. Under my name, he commanded other Heartless in quest to snatch away the hearts of many different worlds. At the center of the hearts Xehanort had stolen was Kingdom Hearts, which attracts tremendous darkness to itself and attempts to send any and all matter back into its depths. The other five have disappeared. Have they become Heartless like Xehanort? Or did they vanish after Xehanort exploited them? I became familiar with an unusual entity while pursuing the truth. It is the soul and body that remain when a being loses its heart. When a heartless is born, these entities disappear from the realm of light, to be reborn as entirely new beings in a completely different realm. While beings born of darkness and those lacking hearts may find them convenient, it is dangerous for others to make much use of the corridors of darkness. Darkness erodes the heart. In search of a place to proceed with my research and planning away from prying eyes, I found myself in Twilight Town. It is a quiet village, forgotten in the chasm between light and darkness. I situated myself in the basement of an abandoned mansion standing beyond the woods. My underground research resulted in one new discovery after another. When a heartless is born, the body and soul left behind are reborn into this world as a different being. They possess different intentions than their heartless brethren, 
And while it is unclear what these sentient things are after, it would appear they are responsible for much bedlam in the world. My erstwhile friend the King and his subjects, along with a hero wielding the Keyblade, are battling the Heartless even as a new threat approaches. This new threat, they have given themselves a fitting name, I suppose. These non-beings, nobodies. A great number of nobodies have lost human form, as have the Heartless. Yet, the nobody born of someone with a strong heart retains its shape, but with the faintest visible changes. It appears my betrayers have retained their human forms as nobodies, and are gathering more followers in hopes of furthering a new scheme. Organization 13, formed of 13 nobodies with my betrayers at its core, is divided into two. They are said to be carrying out some sort of research. Seeking to uncover the plans of this organization, I have decided to head for where six of its members have gathered, towering over the outer limits of the realm between darkness and light. Castle Oblivion. It appears that I have been too distracted by the behavior of Xehanort and his cohorts, and by the events occurring in their vicinity. My friend's struggle to protect the Realm of Light from the threat of Heartless is now over, with Xehanort's Heartless, going by the name of Ansem, Seeker of Darkness, defeated at last. The other wielder of the Keyblade, this hero, traveled from world to world, sealing up keyholes and laying Heartless low. Meanwhile, the King, who had dived into the Realm of Darkness, worked with the Keyblade-wielding hero to close the door to Kingdom Hearts from the realms of both darkness and light, thus holding off the threat of tremendous darkness. But there are still a great number of Heartless afoot, and Organization 13 and the Nobodies continue to be active in the shadows. Indeed, the world is still a very dangerous place. We must find a way to do battle with these enemies. Thus, I will both make amends and have my revenge. It is for this reason that I infiltrated Castle Oblivion. It consists of 13 floors above and 12 floors below ground, with the contents of its white rooms transforming in response to its visitors' memories. Organization 13 was conducting experiments on memory here. The subject in these experiments, a girl named Namine, appeared to possess extremely unusual abilities. Were they attempting to derive something from these powers? Refusing to be distracted by Organization 13, I had returned to my own secret research when a new visitor appeared at the castle today. It was Sora, the Keyblade-wielding hero who had defeated Ansem and his companions. Deep underground, the stench of darkness arose. All the players are coming together, it would seem. I should have expected nothing less from a Keyblade-wielding hero. Sora and his friends defied the machinations of Organization 13 and rescued Namine. Namine was a witch who controlled the memories of others. Most likely these powers were achieved through a special process when she was born. Namine is a nobody created when a young girl's heart left her body. Yet, she has no corresponding heartless. This is because the young girl in this case was a princess. Kairi, a resident of Radiant Garden over which I had ruled, was one of the seven princesses that uphold the Realm of Light. With no darkness in her heart, Kairi produced no heartless, and instead of vanishing, her body remained in the Realm of Light. In other words, both the nobody called Namine and the Heartless, proof of a lost heart, are extremely unstable beings who lack the bodies needed to produce a nobody. Therefore, they also lack Kairi's memories. One reason for this may be that Kairi's heart did not return to the darkness when separated from her body, but rather migrated to another vessel deep within Sora's heart. That is, Namine is an alter ego of the Kairi who has directly interfered with Sora's heart. 
Could this be why Sora and those whose hearts are connected to him were able to have their memories controlled? She is a non-being in the truest sense of the word, having not even become a true nobody and with nowhere left to go. She is but the most fleeting of shadows. Sora went to sleep in order to recover the memories he lost in Castle Oblivion. It would take quite some time to bring back all the memories he created in his lifetime. But Organization 13 held sway over Castle Oblivion. Sora would need to be kept someplace more secure. I persuaded Naminé to move the slumbering Sora to Twilight Town for safekeeping. Naminé. As I have written here before, she is a most unusual being. Born of the same process as a nobody, but lacking virtually all elements of a nobody. Perhaps she continues drawing in hopes of capturing that which she lacks, the memories of others, especially Sora. I have arrived at a hypothesis. I believe that Naminé was born as a special type of nobody when Sora attacked himself with the Keyblade, causing his and Kairi's hearts to leave their bodies simultaneously. Naminé emerged as Kairi's nobody, but the body and soul necessary to exist as a nobody belonged to Sora. When a person's heart is stolen, a heartless is born with no sense of self, and the body and soul left behind give rise to a nobody. What if one willingly releases one's heart from one's body? Sora and Xehanort retain their selfhood even after becoming heartless. Then there are Kairi and Namine. Kairi was exceptional for having had no darkness within her heart. Also exceptional was that her heart, once freed, migrated to a new vessel, Sora. The combination of these two theoretically unlikely exceptions may be behind this anomaly. There are matters I must attend to while Sora is sleeping. A new ally has appeared on the scene, Riku. I was reunited with an old friend at Castle Oblivion, but was unable to disclose my identity. If he knew the situation, he would likely try to stop me from carrying out my revenge. As much as I would dearly love to converse with him as in the old days, that is now but a hopeless dream. My friend has been fighting in the realm of darkness. Most likely he found his way there through Traverse Town. Like Castle Oblivion, that village also rests in the cleft between light and dark. It consists of the remnants of worlds whose hearts have been stolen by the Heartless. It is where those who have barely escaped the destruction of their worlds eventually find themselves. The realm between is quite unstable, with corridors of darkness appearing from time to time. Whenever a world disappears, some of its inhabitants must arrive here through these corridors. Surely Sora traveled these same corridors of darkness when he first came to Traverse Town. It seems, my friend, fighting in the realm of darkness, appeared in Castle Oblivion through a corridor of darkness constructed by Organization 13. My new ally Riku also affected his return via one of these corridors. He swore he would give me, he, he swore to me he would give his all for his best friend, Sora. In fact, Sora's memories have been slow to return. Thus, I have asked Riku to bring me another Sora, his nobody. Sora is indispensable if I am to achieve my goal. I require the Keyblade-wielding hero to fly through the Realm of Light and defeat Organization 13. Apart from Namine, nobodies retain their memories of their time as humans. But Sora's nobody, Roxas, has lost Sora's memories. This is likely because Sora's time as a Heartless was short, having recovered his heart and returned to his human form soon after leaving behind Roxas, his nobody. It would seem Roxas is much like Namine. Namine is Kairi's nobody, but came into being via Sora's body and soul. Likewise, 
Roxas is Sora's nobody, but was left behind because Sora's Heartless regained human form using Kairi's heart instead of his own. It may be that Sora's memories are slow to return because the half of him that is Roxas is still lacking. I must convert Roxas into Data and return him to Sora. As a member of Organization 13, it was exceedingly difficult to bring Roxas in. Having lost to Roxas once, Riku laid everything on the line and used the power of darkness in their second battle, only just managing to bring Roxas back with him. But Organization 13 grows ever nearer. Here, Twilight Town, is where Roxas was reborn as a nobody. This is where Roxas first encountered Organization 13 and joined its ranks. They are bound to search this place thoroughly. First, I shall convert all of Twilight Town into data and construct a world duplicate in Sora's memories. I shall place Roxas within that world to live out his days and regain those memories. There is little time. The Organization's schemes must be making steady progress as well. Tomorrow, Sora awakens. My long and drawn-out revenge is nearing its end. Xehanort, who took everything away from me. Though as a heartless he is no more, as the leader of Organization 13, his ambition once again is to capture Kingdom Hearts, the most colossal heart of all. His heartless had attempted to draw out the great darkness of Kingdom Hearts, created from the hearts of all worlds. His nobody, however, is now almost finished gathering human hearts to be assimilated into Kingdom Hearts as well. The Fool. Only one mystery remains. How did Xehanort manage to open the door that appeared in the basement of my castle? No. Any theory posited now, when everything is nearing completion, would be meaningless. Roxas, Ansem, Namine. They defy all logic, yet there they are, singular exceptions to the rule. The theories proposed by me and by Organization 13 have been blown to pieces by a handful of strong-hearted individuals. Sora, Kairi, Riku. Ah yes, Riku. Though his heart had its weaknesses making it prone to darkness, he found support in the hope he discovered beyond suffering. This hope allowed him to stand his ground and turn the darkness in his heart from an enemy into his greatest weapon. When all this is over, it is my fervent hope that he will be able to return with Sora to his island. If I can, I should like to return to Radiant Garden, to look once more upon the beautiful water, the lovely flowers and the hopeful smiles of the people. Dear King, my friend, I believe that, at some point in time, you will come across these, my truthful accounts. How I wish I could have chatted with you again. I was a fool, obsessed with revenge. Forgive me. So those were the Ansem reports, which um, definitely put some things into uh, perspective. Alright, so we'll... Um, We'll go through the uh, character files. I'll leave them up on screen for a few seconds so you can pause and read them to yourselves if you want to. I'll pull up the, um, the full images, and that'll be it for this section. Oh yeah, there's like full entries. All right, you know what? You guys have seen all the characters throughout the game. You know who everyone is, what they're doing. We'll just go through and uh, show the full images. Would've been a lot cooler if they have like different poses so you could see their weapons on this too, but... I mean, Sid's only weapon is his foul mouth. Maybe not in this game, but if you played his original game, Final Fantasy VII, you know what I'm talking about. I have to say, I like Cloud's um, Advent Children appearance way better than I like the one in the uh, first game. 
Just, just my opinion. So those are all the Radiant Garden characters. So as you can see, the um, the entries in the journal, the uh, world tabs, are not really in the same order as uh, how we visited the worlds, but uh, I'll follow the journal order. So, I mean, Sora, Donald, and Goofy get their own entries in each world. Um, some characters get... Well, that's just him all dressed up and fancy. And that's the beast we know and love. Then Belle in her normal attire. And how she looked in Kingdom Hearts 1 and for that infamous ballroom scene. Do you have the time, good sir? Candlewick dinner for three? You know, because he has three candles. My favorite character in the whole movie, because I do enjoy a good cup of tea. And, of course... Zaldin. Before we saw his face, and after we saw his ugly face. Alright, so we've got our regular happy hero Hercules, I'm pretty sure. Alright, and this is, uh, worn down, depressed Hercules. Danny DeVito. Shut up, Meg. Oh, Auron. You know, I, I foresee a, uh, a Final Fantasy X Let's Play in the future. Look at the pretty puppy. Look at the pretty puppy. Look at those razor sharp teeth and those satanic red eyes. Oh, look at the cute multi headed dragon snake thing. That was a fun fight. <laughs> The weakest looking member of the organization, and yet, he actually had so much fight in him. Yeah, who knows, maybe we'll see him again.
So Jafar in his creepy, creepy uncle looking wizard form. And of course, in his genie form. And this lion little shit who knew exactly where Jafar was pretty much the whole time. Ping, or better known as Mulan. Ping. How the hell did she even come up with that one? Ping. Oh well. Sh should we start calling Mushu Baby Smog? I mean, can we have Baby Smog to go with Baby Yoda? He's a midget. Whoops. Damn, that dude is creepy looking. And then, of course, Zigbar, Greg. All right, our favorite fat little honey-loving bear. Thankfully, Randy Marsh is nowhere near him right now. Even in his journal entry, this poor little thing was just terrified of everything. Rabbit looks like he hasn't slept in a month. I feel your pain, buddy. Look at that frown. Just look at that frown. That's, that's depressing. Alright, at least someone is uh, smiling in the world of furry little animals. Oh, hey, go for his too. Because he can just go underground and get away from everyone else's BS. Sorry, got confused there. Thought somehow I got back to Simba again. Who needs Kung Fu Panda when you've got Kung Fu Monkey? It was so satisfying watching you go over that cliff. You know, to quote an old joke that was uh, in one of the episodes of the old Timon and Pumbaa cartoon series, I don't know if any of uh, anybody watching is like old enough to remember that show or not, but uh, Timon says to Pumbaa, hey Pumbaa, what did one hyena said to the other hyena when they reached the top of Mount Everest? 
I don't know, Timon. What? Hyena for you? Yeah, I know. It was funnier. It was funnier when I was younger. And Pete's pudgy lion form. They, they did a good job of the character transformations for us, Sora, Donald, Goofy, and Pete, and all them. Speaking of which... Oh yeah, you know what? Hold on, I, I made a boo-boo. So, Sora in his lion form. I'm not gonna do Sora, Donald, and Goofy in every world, but I will show the ones where they transformed. Um, Donald looking like Zazu's uh, third cousin twice removed. Goofy becoming the fastest turtle in history. Alright, and back to Atlantica, so we've got Mer Merboy Sora. It's Barnacle Boy! And there's Squidward. No, I mean Donald. And Goofy is still a turtle. Oh, right, 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 it shows you as a little seaweed monster. And here is the piglet of Atlantica, little guppy terrified of everything. so cool being able to play Disney Castle in this game. I mean, I'm sure there was like some kind of cheat code on the original Kingdom Hearts 1 to get in there, or I'm sure there's mods out now where you can do it on Kingdom Hearts 1, but still, this was the first game where you were like really able to play in Disney Castle, and I wish they had done more with it. But, you know, it is what it is. For some reason, this like defaulted to the Radiant Garden tab, I think, so... What did we just do? Disney Castle? Let's get up here, because I think we missed quite a bit. Or did we go through all this? No, we definitely did not go through all this. I must have, uh, I must have hit the button by accident. So, Sora, when we first got control of him back... Alright, I'm just gonna I'm gonna stop doing the full character rotations, otherwise this video is gonna be like probably longer than the first game's uh, review video, which I think I dragged out a little too long. So there's Kyrie in her schoolgirl outfit, and then Kyrie in her uh, travel or you know play clothes apparently. Her I'm gonna get kidnapped like Princess Peach clothes. Quote unquote Ansem, who we know is really Riku trapped as Xehanort's Heartless, and then we finally got to see Riku go back to himself. Uh, selfie. Blech. Stupid. And of course, it wouldn't be a Kingdom Hearts game without this raggedy old bitch coming back from the dead. But you know... How did she come back? How did she manage to come back? Don't worry, that'll be explained in like six games from now. Our cute little synthesizer buddies. 
Yoda, I mean King Mickey. Namine. Diz, who we came to know was Handsome the Wise. Xehanort. But is that Xehanort? And then just the various organization 13 members, and then Xemnas, Zigbar, Zaldin, oh, Vexen, Lexius, Zexion, Syx, Axel, Demix, Luxord, Marluxia, Angry Bitch, Roxas. And of course, of course, this guy, this guy, the mysterious lingering will. Look at that sick freaking keyblade. Look at that sick freaking armor. Look at that sick freaking cape. Everything about this design was just sick. Oh, 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 oh. All right, so that was our regular uh, main character page. Yeah, that that does default to Radiant Garden. What's up with that? All right, I should have been paying more attention. Sorry about that. So then, Roxas in his uh, regular clothes, Hainer, Pence, Olette, Cipher, Rai, Fu, Setzer, the freaking whiny ass little bitch who asked us to throw the final match of the tournament, Vivi. A very angry wizard if you steal his brooms and his hat. Alright, now we can go back to where we were. And I believe we stopped... Yeah, didn't do Timeless River yet. So Sora as he appeared in, in the past. Donald as he appeared in the past. Goofy as he appeared in the past. Um, old Pete that they actually thought was uh, modern Pete. Old Pete, now that we realize he's Old Pete. Uh, Horus. Clarabelle. Clara. Maybe King Mickey, which obviously it's King Mickey, just old King Mickey. And then there's the regular Pete that we've all known to, that we've all come to know and despise. And of course, Maleficent made her appearance known as well. Uh, Sora in his Halloween form. And the Christmas form. The um, the Christmas Town music and forms were Final Mix exclusive. The original Kingdom Hearts 2 did not have those. Mummy Donald. Olaf Donald. Just kidding, Donald was a snowman before Olaf was ever a thing. Frankenstein Goofy. And Reindeer Goofy. Pumpkin King, and the Christmas Usurper. Little shit number one, little shit number two, little shit number three, Santa! The bathtub, for some reason, gets its own character entry. Okay. I think those reindeer starved to death. And of course, the boogeyman, who had no idea what the hell was going on because his mind was all messed up from being brought back from the dead. Yeah. And of course, Maleficent had to put her two cents in here, too. Sora in his, uh grittier pirate appearance, even though it really doesn't reflect it in the journal entries. The worst pirate we've ever heard of, but we have heard of him. Legolas. Well, I mean, I mean William Turner. Wah. Luxord, or 
Organization 13's number 10. Boy, you know, compared to the other organization members, we really, uh, really didn't see or hear much about this guy. Oh well, what can you do? Sora on the grid. Donald on the grid. Goofy on the grid. Tron. Upgraded Tron. Commander Shithead, I mean Sark. The MCP. Wow, that is ugly. And the self destruct program for Radiant Garden. And the world that never was is just the organization members, which we've already seen them all, and then Handsome again and King Mickey. Alright, so for the Heartless, we've got the Shadow, Soldier, Large Body. That thing has another reaction command? You gotta be kidding. Oh, okay. That, that's... did not realize that. The Silver Rock. The Emerald Blues. The Crimson Jazz. I love that they kept the, um, the musical Heartless trend going throughout the series. That was a, a neat little thing they did there. But anyway, Air Pirate. The Trick Ghost. Rabid Dog. The Hook Bat, Bookmaster, Minute Bomb, which really you've only got about 10 seconds, Hammer Frame, Bulky Vendor, a cute little bugger. For, for an evil gumball machine that wants to eat your heart out, he's actually a cute little bugger. Uh, Fortune Teller, Cannon Gun, Rapid Thrust. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. My, my mind is just too filthy to say it without cracking up. Rapid, rapid thruster. Oh my god. This is a kid's game, Disney. What the hell? Driller Mole. Lance Soldier. Morning Star. Fiery Globe. Icy Cube. Fat Bandit. Luna Bandit. Gargoyle Knight. Gargoyle Warrior. That's not Goliath or Hudson. White Knight, Graveyard, Toy Soldier, Aeroplane, Hot Rod, Assault Rider, Night Walker, Bolt Tower, Magnum Loader, Straffer, Devastator, Living Bone, Shaman. Hated those things. Aerial Knocker. Tornado Step. Crescendo. Creeper Plant. Armored Knight. Surveillance Robot. Neo Shadow. Uh, spring Metal. So, Spring Metal. Uh, let me get out of this for a second. Okay, yeah. So, Spring Metal was a Final Mix exclusive enemy in the Cavern of Remembrance along with the Aerial Viking, Magic Phantom, the Fuddler, Rune Master, Iron Hammer, Mad Ride, Camo Cannon, and of course the Reckless. So that, uh, yeah, that can cool. Oh, no, Lance Warrior 2 was also uh, Cavern of Remembrance and Final Mix exclusive, along with the Necromancer. They got these really out of order. Aerial Champ, all right, so Aerial Champ was the last of the Final Mix exclusive uh, Cavern of Remembrance Heartless. Now we have our boss Heartless, the Volcanic Lord, the Blizzard Lord, Thresholder, Possessor, the Shadow Stalker, Dark Thorn, Illuminator, the Grim Reaper, the Ground Shaker. That thing is freaking cool looking, it really is. The Prison Keeper, the Storm Rider, also freaking cool looking. Honestly, this game's bought like Heartless bosses were so, so well designed, in my opinion. 
All right, then we have our mushroom 13s. There's number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven, number eight, number nine, number 10, number 11, number 12, and of course, number 13, who gave us that sweet keyblade. All right, that's it for the heartless tab. Now the nobodies, we have the dusk, we have the creepers, the dragoons that were commanded directly by Zaldan, the assassins that I think were controlled directly by... Oh crap, who controlled these ones? Uh, I think those were just ones that everybody had say over. The samurai that were controlled by Roxas, the snipers that were controlled by Zigbar, the dancers that were controlled by Demix, the berserkers that were controlled by Syx, the gamblers who were controlled by Luxord, sorcerers who were controlled by Xemnas, and the Twilight Thorn, the only true nobody boss we had in the game. Uh, treasures, 301 chests in the game, we got them all. Uh, I'm not going to go through what each chest was, but the important thing is, we got them all. Uh, the puzzle pieces, we had our awakening puzzle, our heart puzzle, our duality puzzle, our frontier puzzle, the daylight puzzle, and the sunset puzzle. We've got all our maps for each area. For our missions, we had um, Inspect the Absent Silhouette, Mail Delivery 14 seconds, Cargo Climb 15 seconds, Grandstander 100 points, Poster Duty 30 seconds, Bumble Buster 10 seconds, Junk Sweep less than 6 points, uh, Win by 100 points or more against Hainer, Win with a score of 150 against Setzer, Win with a max score of 200 against Cypher, uh, Finish SB Street Rave 1000 points, Mushroom 7 in 10 seconds. Mushroom 8 with a score of 85. Fuck that asshole. Uh, number 12. Mushroom 12. Score of 40 or more. In Radiant Garden, we had to talk to the uh, Yuna, Riku, and Pain again to get the Gullwing Keyblade. We had to go ruin Sephiroth's day. SB Freestyle, 200 points. Uh, Cavern of Remembrance. Investigate and fight all the organization data battles. Mushroom number 9, 75 points or more. Mushroom 13, challenge to a non-duel because he just hands over the prize, which is awesome. Uh, Beast Castle, just the absent silhouette. And Mushroom 3 with a score of 450. Olympus Coliseum, the absent silhouette. Uh, Phil's Training, Practice Mode, Maniac Mode with a score of 1,000 or more. Uh, Pain and Panic Cup with 2,000 points or more. Cerberus Cup with 1,000 points or more. Titan Cup with 5,000 points or more. Goddess of Fate Cup with 3,000 points or more. Uh, Paradox Pain and Panic Cup with 2,500 points or more. Paradox Cerberus Cup with 1,300 points or more. Paradox Titan Battles with 10,000 points or more. And Paradox Hades Cup with 15,000 points or more, which <laughs> surprisingly got, we got through that with like almost no trouble. Uh, Mushroom number six, destroy them all in 45 seconds. Agrabah, redo the Cave of Wonders, inspect the absent silhouette. Uh, Magic Carpet Game, 65 points or more. SB Sand Slider, 10 or more points. Mushroom number 5, kill it in 10 seconds. 100 Acre Wood, a blustery rescue with 18,000 points. Honey Slider with 8,000 points. Balloon Bounce with 2,000 points. Expedition, which was the Spooky Cave in 90 seconds. Honey Pot, which was the, the Starry Hill Swing Game with 8,000. Um, Atlantica's God Awful DDR Guitar Hero Merger, Perform All the Songs Again. You know, I guess it really isn't terrible, it's just I wanted to see a playable Atlantica and I wanted to take my Keyblade and smack her so it's even more Psychotic Sister in between the eyeballs with it. But you know what? I guess we, you know, we can't always get what we want. Uh, Halloween Town gift wrapping 150 points workshop rave thousand points mushroom number two uh, 80 or more points 
Port Royal, Absent Silhouette, SB Time Attack in 40 seconds, Mushroom number 10 in 55 seconds, Space Paranoids, uh, Light Cycle with 30 or more enemy kills, Land of Dragons, Mushroom number 4 with a score of 85 or more, uh, Disney Castle, Investigate the Mysterious Entranceway, which led us to ta The Lingering Will, <laughs> almost ruined that one. Uh, Timeless River, Mushroom number 11 in 19 seconds. Uh, World That Never Was, uh, Destroy Zemnis and Beat the Game, and Mushroom number 1 with a score of 70 or more. And then of course our mini game tabs just lists off all the mini games that we I just listed off the missions for, so I won't list those all again. This journal's way bigger than Kingdom Hearts 1 was. Holy crap. Um, our limit menu, we have uh, Donald has Fantasia and Flare Force. Goofy has Twister Fusion and Teamwork. Beast has Howling Moon. Orin has Overdrive. Mulan has Dragon Blaze. Aladdin has Trick Fantasy. Uh, Jack Skellington has Applause Applause. Jack Sparrow has Treasure Isle. Simba has the King's Pride. Tron had the Complete Compliment. Riku's Eternal Session. Sora's Trinity Limit and Team Trinity Limit. Uh, the Peter Pan Summon had Neverland. Chicken Little Summon had uh, First Person Shooter Mode. Stitch had the Ohana Limit. And Genie had Sonic Rave and Valor Form. Strike Raid and Wisdom Form. Final Arcana in Master Form, and Infinity in Final Form. Uh, synthesis Notes. Our Moogle is maxed out at level 9, Primo status. We, achieved, we obtained all 60 materials, completed all 54 collection goals, and synthesized all 59 recipes. Our Character link section just shows the little pictures of all the main characters. Uh, Lingering Will is considered a main character, which means he is going to be important somewhere along the way. And then, uh, I'm, um, I'm not going to go through and read all the uh, stories after all. I mean, we did the Let's Play. You, you saw all the cutscenes and the story of what happened. We will just go through the, um, the albums again. So, thank Naminé. Awakening, The King's Teacher, Kyrie Arrives, The Road Onward, Another World, Into the Darkness, Recorded Data. Okay, that is the last one. All right, okay. Now, obviously, these albums are separated between the first and second visits for each world, so you're not technically seeing them in order right now. But for Radiant Gardens, we have the Committee, Organization 13, The Journey Begins, Ansem the Wise, Battle Royal, what a battle royal it was, A King Decides, Heartless again. Its true name. Beast Castle. Reunion with Beast. The Castle Secret. The Beast Deceived. Ballroom Battle. Dressed Up Duo. The Most Precious. Bell's Victory. Together forever. Damn, that's beautiful. Orin versus Hades. Not the first time Orange challenged a god, by the way. Heroic reunion. Meg the captive. Shut up, Meg. Destroyed Colosseum. The Hades cup. Hades puppet. The Hero Returns, Heroes at Last. And in Agrabah we have The Lamp Thief, Quest for Treasure, Ordeals Overcome, Bottled Up, 
Jafar is released. Oh, oh, sorry. Double trigger there. Jafar is released. The flying carpet. Jafar's trap. Working his magic. Oh, that's it. Thought for sure we'd see something for Genie Jafar, but I guess not. Well, we did, and I just scrolled so fast I didn't see it. Hold on. Oh, yeah, Jafar's released. But you didn't show him as the genie. Okay, whatever. Mushu and Ping. Avalanche! Mulan revealed. China's bravest. A man in black. The earth shakes. Could it be Riku? No, that looks like Zigbar to me. Good friends. They're more than friends. For Hundred Acre Wood, we have Memories Lost, Memories Found, Sora Remembered, I'm Always Here. Aw, oh, damn, that one tugs on the heartstrings a little. Alright, in the Pride Lands, we have Animal Kingdom, Reunion with Simba, Finding Yourself, The New King, Scar's Phantom, Losing Yourself, Simba Renewed, Giant Heartless. In Atlantica, we have A Chance Meeting, Ariel the Human, Battle with the Sea Bitch, I Mean Witch, and Two Worlds Now One. Disney Castles is pretty short too, yep. Disney Castle, Meeting the Queen, The Cornerstone, Peace Returns. For now. Pete? The King? Pete <laughs> Pete and Repeat. Oh that's that that's cute. That, that's cute. All aboard. All right, Port Royal, we have Steadfast Friends, The Undead Curse, Close Call, Lifting the Curse, The Curse Returns, Parlay, oh did that word cause us some trouble in that one, to Port Royal, Battle Spoils. Merry Halloween, Sandy Claws, Oogie's Back, and Oogie's dead. The Santa Jack. The Present Thief. Mischievous Trio. Little Shits 1, 2, and 3. The Real Culprit. From the Heart. Meeting Tron. Playing the Game. Hostile Program. Tron's User. MCP Runs Amok. The Solar Sailor, MCP Face-Off, Farewell Tron, and then in the world that never was, we have another Man in Black, Reunion, What Will Happen, The Final Door, and we saw what lie beyond that final door. All right, so, I mean, that's as far into the journal as we're going to go. Like I said, I'm not going to go as overboard with this one as I did in the uh, first game. So, for our item inventory, we have a uh, potion, high potion, and ether. You can get them from the, uh, the item shops. Uh, you can also get the tent from the item shop. But the Elixir, Mega Potion, Mega Ether, Mega Elixir, the 
drive recoveries and all the boosts, you can only stockpile those through synthesis. And I'll just scroll through and show each one. Alright, so for our key items, the Proof of Connection we got for defeating Lingering Will. Proof of Non-Existence was for de um, defeating all 13 Organization Data Battles. Proof of Peace was for satisfying the Mushroom 13. The Money Pouch we got from the King way in the beginning of the game. Same with the Crystal Orb. The uh, Membership Card we got from our friends in Radiant Garden when we you know, when they suddenly remembered us. The ice cream and picture we got from Riku after the Thousand Heartless battle. It actually got us out of the uh, Realm of Darkness and back to the Realm of Light. The Hades Cup trophy we got for uh, taking taking on the uh, Paradox Hades Cup. Um, the Synthesis materials, just to review. The Blazing Shards we got from the Minute Bomb. The Blazing Stone we got from the Tornado Step. Blazing Gems from the Fat Bandit. Blazing Crystals from the Crimson Jazz. Frost Shards from the Hook Bat. Frost Stone from the Hot Rod. Frost Gem from the Fortune Tellers. Frost Crystal from the Living Bones. Lightning Shards from the Rapid Thrusters. <laughs> Lightning Stone from the Emerald Blues, Lightning Gem from the Armored Knight, Lightning Crystal from the Devastator, Lucid Shard from the Trick Ghost, Lucid Stone from the Graveyards, Lucid Gem from the Bookmasters, Lucid Crystals from the Neo Shadows, Power Shards from the Large Bodies, Power Stones from the Luna Bandits, Power Gem from the Aerial Knockers, right? Aerial Knockers. Yep, Power Crystals from the Morning Star. Dark Shard from the Shadow. Dark Stone from the Assault Rider. Dark Gem from either of the two Gargoyle enemy variants. Dark Crystal from the Air Pirate. Uh, Dense Shard we got from the Creepers. Dense Stone we got from the Snipers. Dense Gem we got from the Samurais. Dense Crystal we got from the Berserker. Twilight Shard we got from the Dusks. Twilight Stones we got from the... Dancers. Twilight Gem from the Assassin. Twilight Crystal from the Sorcerers. Mithril Shards, Stones, Gems, and Crystals could only be obtained through Synthesis, uh, besides some that were in Treasure Chests. Remembrance Shard, Remembrance Stone, Remembrance Gem. Oh, wait a minute. Remembrance Shard we got from the Iron Hammer. Remembrance Stone we picked off from the Magic Phantom. Remembrance Gem we picked off from the Mad Ride. And Remembrance Crystal, the only enemy that drops them is the uh, Reckless, which is the Red Pallet Swap Devastator. The Tranquility Shard. Tranquility Stone, Tranquility Gem, and Tranquility Crystals. We, um, you can get them from any of the Mushroom 13, but number 5 is of course the easiest, as you saw in the uh, Synthesis video. The Bright Shard we got from the Soldier. Bright Stone came from the Aeroplane. Bright Gem came from the Magnum Loader. Bright Crystal came from the Air Pirate. Energy Shard from the Nightwalkers. Energy Stone from the Hammer Frame. Energy Gem from Emerald Blues. Energy Crystal from the Bookmaster. The Serenity Shard came from the Assault Rider. Serenity Stone from the Crimson Jazz. Serenity Gem from the Bookmasters. Now, of course, the Serenity, all the Serenity materials, including the Crystal, can be obtained from the uh, bulky vendor. But the Serenity Crystal, you can also synthesize. Um, the Final Mix exclusive Manifest Illusion came from... Uh, uh, you can either synthesize them, or you can uh, 
farm lingering will to get as many of them as you want. Lost illusions only come from, I believe, a handful of treasure chests, and then you get one for each absent silhouette, and you can farm the data battles, and that is also a uh, Final Mix exclusive material. Oh, Remembrance items, uh, Remembrance materials, and tra Tranquility materials are also Final Mix exclusive. Then we have our Orichalcums, which can only be farmed from the bulky vendors. Then we have our Orichalcum Pluses, which we picked up for, um, we picked up seven of them in, uh, let's see, one came from Space Paranoids, one came from Twilight Town, one came from Hundred Acre Wood, one came from Atlantica, I think we got one in the world that never was, then we got one for doing, um, the Goddess of Fate Cup, and one for picking up one of every other type of synthesis material. Uh, then we have our Summon Charms. We got this from Merlin early in the game for the Chicken Little Summon. We got this after defeating the Volcanic Lord and Blizzard Lord to Summon Genie. We picked this up in Ansem Study after uh, the Space Paranoid's first visit, I think. And then the Feather Charm was in a treasure chest in uh, Port Royal during the second visit. So for our armor, Elven Bandana and Divine Bandana we got from the shop. Protect Belt came from clearing the Cerberus Cup. The Gaia Belt came from a treasure chest in the IO Tower communications room in Space Paranoids. Uh, power Band and Buster Band we made through item synthesis. Uh, cosmic Belt we got from a treasure chest in the world that never was Twilight's View. The Fire, Fyra, and Fyraga bangles you can get in the shop. Scratch that. The Fire and Fyra bangle can be bought at the shop. The Fyraga bangle and Fyra Gun bangle have to be synthesized. Uh, same for the Blizzards. The Blizzard and Blizzara we could get in the shop. The Blizzaga and Blizzard Gun had to be synthesized. Thunder Trinket and Thundara Trinket from the shop. Thundaga and Thunder Gun Trinkets from Synthesis. The Shock Charm and Shock Charm Plus. We had to get the recipe from Larxene's Absent Silhouette. Those are Final Mix exclusive uh, armors. The Shadow Anklet and Dark Anklet we got from the shop. The Midnight Anklet and Chaos Anklet had to be synthesized. The Champion Belt you get for beating Setzer during the uh, Prologue with Roxas. The Abyss Chain and the Aegis Chain came from the shop. Uh, Acrisius, Acrisius, whatever, and, Ac and Acrisius, whatever plus, is uh, synthesis. The Cosmic Chain came from the Treasure Chest in Radiant Garden's Heartless Manufactory. The Petite Ribbon and the Ribbon were uh, Synthesis, and the Grand Ribbon was for completing the Twilight Puzzle. Alright, on to the Accessories. Ability Ring, Engineer's Ring, Technician's Ring were all bought from the shop. The Skill Ring came from a treasure chest in Agrabah Palace Walls. Pretty sure you could buy them afterwards. Uh, Skillful Ring came from completing the Titan Cup. Expert's Ring and Master Ring had to be synthesized. The Cosmic Ring came from a treasure chest in Hundred Acre Woods, Starry Hill. The Executive's Ring, a Final Mix exclusive accessory, came from completing the Daylight Puzzle. Sardonyx Ring, Tourmaline Ring, Aquamarine Ring came from uh, the shop. The Garnet Ring and Diamond Ring we had to synthesize. The Silver Ring, Gold Ring, and Platinum Ring came from the item shop. The Mithril Ring, Orichalcum Ring, Soldier Earring, Fencer Earring, Mage Earring, Slayer Earring all came from Synthesis. Alright, 
Now this is why I use the cheat to do this to get all the items because the metal you can only get by throwing the fight to Setzer during the prologue with Roxas. So it is technically impossible to get one of everything in this game unless you yeah because the cha the champion belt and the medal are one one of a kind items but I wanted to I wanted you guys to be able to see everything so here's the medal the moon amulet and star charm we get from synthesis the cosmic arts came from a treasure chest in the central computer mesa in space paranoids all right, so the Shadow Archive and the Shadow Archive Plus the, were made through synthesis using the recipe from defeating Zexian's absent silhouette. Full Bloom and Full Bloom Plus, same thing, synthesis requiring the recipe dropped by Marluxia's absent silhouette. The Draw Ring and Lucky Ring in the final mix version can only be obtained through synthesis. In the original version, you could get them other ways. Alright, so now for our Keyblades. Here is the Kingdom Key, which we started the game with. Um, Oathkeeper is not showing up in stock because we currently haven't equipped one of the forms. Uh, Oathkeeper we got during the uh, Twilight Town event battle against the Berserkers. Oblivion we got for defeating Zigbar. Starseeker we got when we got Valorform, but we didn't have the freedom to switch it out until we got Hidden Dragon for uh, defeating Shan Yu. Uh, Hero's Crest is currently equipped, so I'll show you that one afterwards, but that one we got for defeating the Hydra, basically. Uh, Monochrome for defeating Pete in Timeless River. Follow the Wind for defeating Barbosa. Circle of Life we got after Simba was brought to his senses by the spirit of his uh, fallen father. Uh, Photon Debugger we got for defeating the Hostile Program. The Gullwing we got by going and talking to Yunariku and Pain after the Thousand Heartless battle. Uh, Rumbling Rose we got, I think, for defeating Zaldan. I don't think we got this before the fight. I could be wrong, but you get it during the second trip to Beast Castle. Guardian Soul you get for sending Hades packing. Wishing Lamp you get for defeating Genie Jafar. Uh, Decisive Pumpkin I'll show you afterwards because that one's equipped right now. But uh, Decisive Pumpkin we got for defeating the experiment in Halloween Town second episode. Sweet Memories you get specifically for completing the Expedition, which is the uh, spooky cave page in Hundred Acre Wood. Mysterious Abyss, you get specifically for doing the Ursula's Revenge song. Uh, Sleeping Lion, you get from Leon before going into uh, Space Paranoids for the second time. Bond of Flame, you get after the event where Axel blows himself up to let you get into the world that never was. To Become One is a final mix exclusive keyblade that you get for defeating Roxas and Memory Skyscraper. Fatal Crest, you get for completing the Goddess of Fate Cup along with the Orichalcum Plus. Fenrir we got for defeating Sephiroth and watching the accompanying cutscene between him and Cloud. Winner's Proof we got for satisfying uh, Mushroom 13. And real quick, here is the Ultima Weapon that we got from Synthesis. There's the Hero's Crest, there's the Oath Keeper, and there's the Decisive Pumpkin. Let's get back to where we were here. For Donald's staffs, we have the Mage's staff that we started with, the Hammer staff, Victory Bell, Comet staff, Lord's Broom, Wisdom Wand, all came from the shop. The Meteor staff we got in a treasure chest in Port Royal Ship's uh, Ship Graveyard, Sea Drift Keep. Rising Dragon was for finishing the Cerberus Cup. The Shaman's Relic was dropped by the Shaman Heartless. The Shaman's Relic Plus was dropped by the Necromancer variant in the Cavern of Remembrance. The Nobody Lance was dropped by the Dragoons. And then Centurion and Centurion Plus required uh, the recipe from Lexius's Absent Silhouette. Save the Queen and Save the Queen Plus required the uh, 
the clean recipe. And then the plain mushroom, plain mushroom plus, precious mushroom, precious mushroom plus, and premium mushroom were all dropped by um, the mushroom 13, depending on your score. And then for goofy shield, we started off with a night shield. Oh, shaman's relic is um, final mix exclusive. Centurion, Centurion Plus are Final Mix exclusive, and any weapon with the word Mushroom in it is Final Mix exclusive. So for Goofy Shields, we started off with the Night Shield. From the Item Shop, we picked up the Adamant Shield, the Chain Gear, the Falling Star, the Dream Cloud, and the Night Defender. The Ogre Shield we got from a Treasure Chest in Land of Dragon's Throne Room. The... Genji shield we got from the item shop? Uh, I think I might have that one wrong, but uh, I guess we'll stick with it for now. Uh, Akashic Record we got from the Bookmaster. Akashic Record Plus Final Mix Exclusive came from the Rune Master. The Final Mix Exclusive variant in the Cavern of Remembrance. Nobody Guard came from the Gamblers. Uh, Frozen Pride and Frozen Pride Plus are Final Mix Exclusive. They require the recipe dropped by Vexen's Absence Silhouette to synthesize. Save the King and Save the King Plus we got from Synthesis. Uh, again, anything with Mushroom in it is uh, Final Mix exclusive. We have Joyous Mushroom, Joyous Mushroom Plus, Majestic Mushroom, Majestic Mushroom Plus, and Ultimate Mushroom, all from the uh, Mushroom 13, depending on your scores. Alright, so that's all of our inventory items. Now we are going to head out to the gummy ship menu. So, not not really, I'm, I'm gonna go over this very, very quickly. So, the sample blueprints that you get over the course of the game are the high wind. High wind level 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and peak. And then we get the Invincible level 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and peak. And then Falcon level 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and peak. The special models that we get are the Mushroom, Highwind Alpha, Poo Poo, Tonberry, Moogle, Mandragora, Chocobo, Cactar, Cat Shit, uh, Kate Sif, Fenrir, Kingdom, and Secret. Now for our teeny ships. Uh, Wing Edge 1 and 2, Mistyle 1 and 2, Organics 1 and 2, Hawkeye 1 and 2, uh, Eden Coat 1 and 2, Gotch 1 and 2, Valkyrie 1 and 2, uh, a single Cydric, and Durandal 1 and 2. And for special models, only the Kingdom and the Secret. Now, as far as the gummy parts go, we have your material gummies, uh, Bevelt gummies, Curve gummies. And there's just different shapes like there was in the first game. So, Babel, Curve, Pipe Gummies, Arrow Gummies, and Gummy Lumps. So I guess just odd shapes. Um, for our Weapon Gummies, we have Projectiles, uh, Fire, Fyra, Fyraga, Blizzard, Blizzara, Blizzaga, Gravity, Gravira, Gravaga, Comet, Meteor, Shuriken, and Boomerang. For lock-on gummies, we have Thunder, Thundara, Thundaga, Ultima, Drain, Strike, and Boom. For slash gummies, we have Orichalcum, Massimune, Excalibur, Infinity, and Moonring. And for impact gummies, we have Drill, Saw, and Gungner. For, uh, I would see under movement, we have our engine gummies, vernier, thruster, booster, mini propeller, propeller, 
Fast Root for Power, Rotor, and Large Rotor. For Wing Gummies, we have Cyclone, Storm, Tempest, Typhoon, Hurricane, Vortex, Sonic Turbo, Darkness, Angel. And for Auxiliary Gummies, we have our different cockpits. We've got the Bubble Helm, Flat Helm, Solid Helm, Spear Helm, Bridge, and Big Bridge. For Shields, we have Shield, Large Shield, Shell, Large Shell. And for Optional Gummies, we have Neon Orbs, Neon Bars, Wheels, Radar, Antenna, Parabola, Round Light, Square Light, Mast, Flag, Caterpillar, Figure A and G, Figure B and G, Figure C, G, Figure D, G. And then the all-important crown gummy that we got for doing 100% gummy ship completion. Um, we have gummy abilities that were all unlocked through our various mission rewards and treasures. Everything, everything that we got for the gummy ship parts was all either a regular treasure for defeating a red or gold enemy variant, or for clearing a mission. So uh, that's it. We have we have completed this game to 100%. We have done everything there is to do in this game, besides playing through the game at level one, which you will never see me do, ever, with any of them. So. Let's go ahead and drop down in Radiant Garden again. And I, I'm only saving right now just because there was some stuff that was still listed as new and that would drive me nuts. So, this is it. We have done everything in this game. We've cleared the story. We have every Keyblade, every Staff, every Shield. We have done all post-game content, all optional content, the journal's complete, we have we have one of everything in the game that we can actually keep in our possession. Um, there is only one thing left to do now, and that is to go fight Xemnas one more time so we can see the final mix exclusive extra ending scene, and we are going to do that in our next and final episode of our Kingdom Hearts 2 uh, Final Mix Let's Play. Uh, so, as always, I, I thank you all for watching. Uh, we are, as I've said, we are nearing the end of our Kingdom Hearts 2 Let's Play. And I, I hope everyone's enjoyed the journey so far. Um, to me, this, and, and, and not, not, to hate on, not to hate on any of the games in this series, because I love them all. But this this game is, as far as like gameplay quality, this game probably is the best one in the series, and I, I just hope you guys have enjoyed watching uh, as much of as much as I've enjoyed playing through it again. So I will see you guys back for the next and final episode when we uh, take on Zemnis again. Until then, may your heart be your guiding key.